The ending of a Nancy Drew game is probably one of the most important parts. It needs to feel complete, unless intentionally leaving the player on a cliffhanger. The story should feel like it comes full circle and gives a nice resolution to what intrigued Nancy to begin sleuthing in the first place. It should involve some explanation, but the ideal mystery leaves enough clues and hints for the player to deduce their own conclusion prior to the big reveal. There should be a final dose of excitement or thrill to really put the player in the shoes of this teen detective. We should feel some sort of peril or threat lurking about, while also having a nice challenge towards the end that makes one feel they must tune into their wits and use the environment around them to escape. And in today's video, we'll be looking at each Nancy Drew game ending and breaking down what worked and what didn't. And the results may surprise you. The way I sorted out where to place each game was primarily based on the criteria mentioned earlier, excitement and thrill, a good challenge, and a solid resolution. The difficulty of this came from giving an actual ranking number to each game. It just wasn't that simple. Some games' endings are nearly identical in pattern or formula and would have made some ties in the list. I felt the best way moving forward was instead to categorize by tier. There's the top tier. These are the games that have a very polished ending. As the player, you feel a wide array of emotional attachment towards the end. There's threat and danger, and at the same time, there's also a rewarding quality to reaching the end and using your detective wits to crack the case. You receive a very solid resolution on each person and feel complete by the end of the mystery. There's the middle tier. These are the games whose endings may have been a bit more rushed in production, but they still provide some exhilaration in some areas. We may be lacking a little bit of that completion feeling, and at times the ending may feel stiff. Other games in this tier may have lacked that extra boost those in the top tier had. There's the low tier. These are the games where the ending is slow to unfold. We might be missing some answers to questions, and when we finish the game, we're scratching our heads to make sense of how it worked. It may take some extra belief on our part to fill in the gaps. There are attempts to add threat or danger, but they are unmatched to games of other tiers. Now that we've heard an explanation of each tier, let's dive into the lowest and work our way up. And just remember, the games are in no designated order. Alright, here we go. Ah, uh, Midnight in Salem. This may not be a surprise that it's fell below to the low tier, but we should go ahead and break it down anyways. For Midnight in Salem, it has such a different approach to the ending than any Nancy Drew game prior to it. It had a completely different formula, and there were some things I think that did work that were interesting, but for the most part, it just didn't stick and it fell into the low tier. I would say probably the most notable reason it falls into the low tier is its extremely slow unfolding pace. Nancy is basically having a 15 minute conversation with the judge and Alicia, kind of diving through all these clues and basically what Nancy thinks at the end. And it takes a really long time of a lot of dialogue to get to the actual like ending. Most of the Nancy Drew games prior to uh, Midnight in Salem were exciting and thrilling once you got to the end. There was this dangerous music and this whole unfolding of events and sequences that would happen and you'd catch the bad guy. But this had a different feel to it. Instead of that, Nancy kind of is given the opportunity to pick the option of the ending. And while that was interesting and I think could work well for Nancy Drew games moving forward in the future, it didn't work for this one because it just left the game feeling a little dull and anticlimactic. There is no real threat or danger or situation that Nancy has put in that makes the game ending thrilling or exciting. Nancy is just here and she's just solving a case and talking with people. And while it is interesting to see the different options that may play out from Nancy's choices, there's just no real excitement in this ending. There's also a lot of questions left after playing the game, and a lot of parts I feel like that aren't super clear and concise as to who did what, why they did it, and what's really going on here. 
I feel like after I played the game, I really didn't understand the story very well. I had to really submerse myself back into it to understand kind of the motive and what was going on. And it was just a lot at one time. And so I feel like the ending didn't give me that really complete feeling that I usually would feel after solving a case. And so that's the reason why Midnight in Salem falls into the low tier. Next up is Trail of the Twister. This one falls into the low tier for a lot of the same reasons that Midnight in Salem does. It has a very slow unfolding, and I kind of forgot how slow it actually unfolds until I went back and rewatched all of the endings for this video and saw how much we are just jolted from getting to the actual end scene. So if you notice, at the very end of Trail of the Twister, there's this whole conversation that you have with Scott. Scott knocks you out. Then you go all the way to the theater and there's the storm shelter and Nancy goes out because she's going to go save Scott and Debbie is having this whole phone conversation with Nancy before Nancy goes out onto this journey to go save Scott from this tornado. And it's a really long dialogue process that you have to get through where Debbie is kind of explaining some things that you wouldn't have really known without her explanation. And that to me doesn't help give detectives their own right to come to that conclusion on their own. Those hints should have been present throughout the mystery. And of course, there were some very subtle things that we were able to note through Scott's behavior and a little bit of his past, but Debbie has to lay it all out for us at the very end of the game on a quick phone call before the end chase scene. Some other problems that I had re-watching the ending of Trail of the Twister was the idea that a tornado would form at the very same time that Scott is giving his evil villain monologue. It just doesn't work very well and you have to have a lot of belief playing the game that this is happening this is happening right now and then of course there's the ending of the chase scene it it's just so odd because nancy is going from road to road trying to chase scott down and eventually we come upon scott's truck and it's crashed into some trees. And as we approach the truck, then we get this small cutscene that shows us, I guess, what happened to Scott's truck 10 seconds before we got there, which is where the tornado basically is so powerful. The wind is so strong that it jolts the truck over and he crashes. And for some reason, Scott is perfectly laid on the side of the road by this little small shack. And so Nancy opens the shack up and they get shelter. It's a very wild ending that doesn't have a lot of um, good solid foundation. So it's kind of, you're, you're kind of stretched out of the belief that this is happening. Um, it requires a lot more from you to believe, okay, this is real, this is happening. And the threat and the danger isn't really coming from the culprit or the person it's really just coming from the weather and so that really doesn't make for a you know fantastic dramatic ending like we've seen in other games and that's why trail of the twister falls in the lower tier ah a hot take on a game that has made the low tier curse of blackmore manor so I know, I know, I know. First, I want to say I love this game and I think it's phenomenal. And so it pains me to put it this in this category of, of, of a low tier. But after re-watching all of the games, games 1 through 33's endings, I was a little disappointed in this ending. It just didn't mesh as well to me as a lot of other games. And I'll explain why. The first thing is, is the culprit. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that she's a child. So that's going to change the dynamic of the ending of the game. There is no culprit coming after Nancy in this really intensifying music is just bolting us into this action of, I've got to escape and get help right away. That doesn't happen. Actually, it's pretty just chill 
Jane just suddenly walks up like, is that it? Is that what, is that what I've been looking for? Is this rock? And it's just so uh, compared to other games. And so to me, I feel like those good endings just really come in when there are these threats of danger and Nancy has to do something super heroic to either, you know, get the treasure from the bad guy or stop the bad guy from escaping away so she can uh, save the day. This necessarily isn't happening. What, what, what we're really seeing is we are having to save Jane because Jane keeps making these errors and it's because she's a she's a child she's a child and so it just it feels a little you know hindered in that way that we can't have this really exciting ending and then of course once the story does unfold and it does explain how and why and what happened a lot of that you would really have to be I mean just in tune with the story of those very minor details of seeing Mrs. Drake's medication and hearing Jane talk about how her uncle used some hair growth for because he's bald, you would have to really take these very far stretch details and pull them together to think, oh yeah, Jane used all of these things to make her mom believe that she is going away. I mean, you would really have to put all that together. And I don't think that you can with just those small, small details. Although I do think it is amazing that they included those in there. Um, it, it is a really well done to the people that made the game because their attention to detail is so phenomenal in this game. But the ending just doesn't work for those reasons. And also to the escape part of it, like the end challenge puzzle, we had just completed that same puzzle earlier. So there wasn't really this great challenge to it. Now I will say maybe the best part of the ending is that idea or the fact that we knew that we needed to get to the forge and getting to the forge was a lot of work. It took a lot of work to get to the forge. So the build up to getting to it was pretty great. Um, I will say that what we did find was a little anticlimactic. The ending is a little anticlimactic, you know, basically the story ends. Jane just kind of gets like a, well, you shouldn't be doing that little Jane, you know, you know better than to do that. And uh, Hugh Penvalin is just like, you know what, Ethel, teach me everything you know. Now I'm super fascinated with all of this because I, now I know it really does exist and I really do believe in it now. And you know, it, it like I don't feel like the resolution for all the characters was really there. That is all the story says about Ethel. That is all. There is nothing else about you know, where does she go? Where does she come from? Nothing. We get nothing on Ethel. She's just the creepy tutor and we don't know anything else other than she's going to now teach Hugh everything she taught Jane. You know, uh, uh, Mrs. Drake, we barely get anything on her either. Nigel just comes back trying to get some details out of Nancy on what happened because he forgot his laptop and that's really it. So it does feel like there's a little bit of rush to get the ending through and that may have been because the other parts of the game were so well done and so extensive in their puzzle and their story and just their cinematic nature like the nightmares and the dreams and the calls that maybe they couldn't do a grand ending because so much of the rest of the game was already so flawless so that is actually why it falls into a low tier for me still love the game i still would go back and replay it to this day there's just some issues there in those areas. Oh, the creature of Kapu Cave, how I wish you would have done this ending completely different. Oh man, so the creature of Kapu Cave, it falls into our low tier. It has so many problems. It is a problematic game, uh, and especially this ending. So let's break it down a little bit. I think where there is the, the biggest mistake is that we could not there's just no way, there's just no way that we could have figured out all of the ending pieces that we needed unless 
Pua and uh, Big Island Mike would have explained them here at this ending. You know, Big Island Mike is having to explain, you know, well, we hired Johnny Kudo to, uh, uh, you know, do this for us. And then he was able to do that. You know, we, we could not have known that. And um, I think that's a really big issue with the creature of Kapu Cave is that there are gaps and you kind of needed some more information to fill that in. You really couldn't have made your own conclusion with the I mean they really weren't even clues. They I think they had tried to point in that direction, you know, so they could later point out like, oh, okay, so that's why a random guy clobbered Joe over the head or Frank over the head. Got it. Yeah, like you just needed more answers to things and so we had to wait and get this really long drawn out dialogue from Big Island Mike at the very end sequence and yeah and it doesn't really feel a lot of like threat or danger it almost just kind of feels like yeah hi we're here yeah we know what we did was wrong and yet you know it, it wasn't very like ooh, there's threat here we've got to hurry and you know it just didn't feel that way and then of course there is no challenge. There's no good detective puzzling, put it together to escape. There's this really, really random puzzle at the very end of the game. And what happens is, is parts of the floor in the volcano fall down. And depending on where you step, another part of the floor will appear. Just gonna let that just stay there. Okay, yeah, all right. So anyways, apart from the really random puzzle at the end, there's also no logic to the puzzle. So you're just kind of hopping around and guessing until you get to the other side. And it's not fun, there's no thinking to it, it's just purely an end. And so it that that is the most unfortunate part about the ending of this game is that I wish we would have had a better resolution. I wish we would have had a better, just nice bow on the end of the story to wrap it all up, but this is the way it unfolds. And so unfortunately, it just doesn't excel well at finishing off the game. And that's why it falls into the lower tier. So similar to Creature of Kapu Cave, I also have an issue with the ending puzzle and the way things play out in Tomb of the Lost Queen. So at the very end, you're going through a lot of different sequences of puzzles, which are very challenging. And you get to like the very, very, very end of the game where you're supposed to beat Abdullah and escape before him. And you get a very similar type of puzzle like Creature of Kapu Cave. Now this one is a little bit more calculated and it is better than Creature of Kapu Cave for sure, um, because it actually has logic to it and a actual way to solve it. But the game itself, the way that this ending all plays out, you know, Abdullah is not really a culprit that gives you a lot of threat or danger vibes. I think he's just a guy who did something bad and he's not really in he's not really trying to go after you he's not really trying to go after Nancy he's just trying to escape and it, it would be I think different you know if Abdullah had approached us as if he was trying to get us you know that is just a little bit more threat or danger this one just feels a bit more distant I don't know um the whole process working up to getting to Abdullah is nothing really cinematic you know uh you see Lily as you're pulling back the coffin and Lily gets trapped behind some rocks. And so, you know, you're trying to figure out a way to help Lily and you go see Jamila and Jamila's like, I'll take care of that. You'll get Abdullah. And at the very end, John, he's emerging from the dust and whacks Abdullah over the head. And it just feels like, you know, everyone had a part in playing at the very end. And it wasn't Nancy that did it, you know? And I feel different about other endings where Nancy is the one that caught the culprit. You know, Nancy thought of a way to escape um, from the culprit's clutches using her wits. And so this one doesn't utilize those same feelings. And I do believe that there was a good and nice resolution for the most part. 
Um, we probably could have gotten a little bit more unfolding or development from the character side and aspect, but for the most part, it was all right in that way. But I do feel like it was slow, I do feel like it was jolted, and I just don't think it's one of the better endings that we've received from a Nancy Drew game. Coming in with another hot take on a game that I do love, but I feel like the ending is in a low tier, Message in a Haunted Mansion. Okay, I know. I may not, this may not become well received later, but I have a method, I have a reason, so here it is. Message in a Haunted Mansion, going back and re-watching the ending, is oddly not what I remember, and maybe it's because the game is magical when you first play it, and the game is magical for the time that it was created, um, but let's talk about this ending though, let's break it down a little bit. I want to talk about the areas where I feel like they lack, why it makes it low. First, when the game does show you the resolution at the end with the letter and everything, we never hear about Charlie. What happened to him? Why don't we hear more about him or what is going to go and happen in his life or anything? You know, we just hear nothing about him. And then also the entire letter is incredibly short. It rushes through and tries to wrap everything up as fast as possible. I do appreciate the cleverness of the end puzzle where we do have to trap the culprit. I think that is a nice touch. I think it's interesting that you have to remember that one side of the stair creaks and the other side doesn't. I think that's a clever um, ch challenge for the detective. That is much more sleuthier to me than some of the other end game puzzles that we've seen so far. But I think where it loses me is actually the energy that Lewis has when he comes to Nancy. And I've talked about this in some of my other videos. I have a problem with the energy that Lewis puts off as a culprit. He's so monotone and he is so low energy as a culprit. It is super anticlimactic. <laughs> I mean, really it is. If you go back and watch, and I may play the audio clip for you guys, Lewis just comes up out of nowhere and is like, ha ha. I got you. Like, I kid you not, that's literally what he sounds like. And he's like, I'm off with the treasure now. You'll never catch me. Like, that's, li <laughs> I'm not lying. That's literally how his audio sounds. It is just so, just nothing. It's like no energy. And also too, why does, how, how does Lewis knock Nancy out for like five seconds and then she wakes back up? It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So to me, that is why it kind of falls into the low tier. It is a little stiff in its energy. We aren't getting all the answers. There are some gaps. And I just feel like for a game that had a lot to offer, that maybe the ending could have been a little bit more fleshed out. Labyrinth of Lies is another game that I feel like falls in the low tier. And the reason why is just because it doesn't have any kind of threat or danger to it. Actually, the way that the story unfolds is kind of funny. The fact that Nancy just emerges from the bottom of the stage and there's a whole audience just watching this unfold is actually kind of quite funny. Um, however, I do feel what makes a good ending is that threat, that danger. And because Nancy unfoils all of this in front of everyone, there's really nothing left to do but to be arrested. <laughs> so pretty much it is anticlimactic in that way that all four are a part of this art heist crime ring thievery and they all are a part of it. So they all get arrested. And so there's really no danger to Nancy. She's figured the mystery out. I do also feel we relied on the ending to help make some of the areas of the game that felt a bit muddy or blurry to kind of clear up those areas. And so I don't feel like it was super clear or concise. And because this was a game that had multiple culprits, um, it did kind of take away 
the power of being a detective in a sense, because it wasn't like you were able to pick a culprit. It was all of them. They all did it. And I don't really know if I'm a huge fan either of those types of um, endings because it doesn't feel like, you know, the whole point, the whole point of the mystery is that someone, maybe it could even be two people or they are, you know, you know what, or even those mysteries where it's, you know, there's a main culprit, but they have some henchmen um, or some sidekicks, you know, that's fine. That I prefer better because then you get to the end and it's kind of like a ha ha moment. Like, yeah, we're, we all did it. So that's the only thing I have wrong with it, you know, and because it ends like that, it just doesn't have this great magical cinematic, the magical, beautiful ending <laughs> it just it just kind of lacks so that's why a uh, labyrinth of lies falls in the lower tier ah uh, this one i feel like this one doesn't warrant much explanation but of course we will dive into it the haunting of castle malloy well let's just be honest this game all around is kind of weird <laughs> i mean and it is i mean it is because the story is pretty strange and so that kind of sets up the ending to be something that isn't fully complete and yeah let's talk about it so first of all let's just talk about how there's so much around fiona and her life and her story that we wouldn't have known that we find out at the very towards the very close end of the game and basically the whole resolution at the very end, we really could not have come to all of that without the letter and the ending. And it's like, here's, here's, here's the story. Here's the whole reason why everything was happening. And so I always have problems with those games because it never felt like I did anything as the player or the, de or as me, the detective, I didn't really get to solve anything. And so that, that in itself is kind of a problem. I will say too, um, just the overall ending is a bit slower pace. Um, we get thrown down into the pit by Fiona and we have to go through several different smaller puzzles in the lab to free Matt and blast the rocket off to be able to get help. It is kind of a far-fetched, you know, idea that we're able to launch this rocket and everyone sees it and it's still the rocket still works and just there's a whole lot of fantasy that we have to believe in to really get emotionally attached and involved into this story and so that's kind of a problem that i have with the haunting of castle malloy is how much is required on our part to buy into this mystery solving it's not a classic mystery it is more of a fantasy type of mystery and i'm okay with that if it's done really well and in this sense i feel like with this story and the way that it flows the ending just ends up being in the low tier because of those reasons. I don't really feel as emotionally attached to this story and its characters like I do some of the other top tier games that we're going to get to. And I think you'll understand why once we explain and dive deeper into that. But that's kind of my explanation on The Haunting of Castle Malloy and maybe why its ending just doesn't hit as well as other ones. The ending of the Shattered Medallion is something interesting. I think because a lot of it is very fluid, so there will be these moments where it feels like something is going in one direction, and then all of a sudden it takes a sharp curve and goes a completely different direction. And to be honest with you, the entire game in itself is kind of confusing, and I've always felt that way. I still, honestly, to this day, I've played it um, a handful of times, I still to this day cannot totally pinpoint exactly everything that's going on. So I feel like that says a lot about its story in general, but when you get to the ending, you want a nice bow on the story. You want to feel like you have resolved everything that you have learned from the clues and pieces that you've picked up along the way. And for the Shattered Medallion, there's a lot of scenes of talking to Curie and then talking to Sunny and then talking to Patrick and then talking to Bess. And there's just so much talking and it is hard to get that concise answer of what is going on. I 
will say I love the cinematics that they added at the end where you are in the raft with Sunny and Sunny's directing you on what path to take. I thought that was actually a really cool callback to uh, Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon when you're trying to escape the mines. Um, that was really fun and it was enjoyable. I just wish that the actual ending made more sense, you know, because even after you you enter into this cave of this raft and you're trying to escape, there's actually still some more puzzling and sleuthing to do. And it just kind of falls flat. It's almost like, man, you wanted that to almost be, because like, if you go back to train, if you go back to the last train to Blue Moon Canyon, oh my gosh, it's so fun because you're in the mine and you know, you're trying to escape. And right at the very end, while you're escaping, you take down the culprit and the game basically just about ends right there. It's just a nice nice ending it just ends you know whereas this one it's like oh that would have been really fun to end this way and somehow we would have you know caught kiri and but it yeah that's not how it happens we still find sunny's grandpa's uh you know medallion shaped puzzle uh there's just some difference in amplitude between the story it just feels like it's trying to fight and go in so many different directions and maybe that's why it feels so and like there's so many gaps is because it just can't resolve um, and that could be a problem with the story I do think it is very slow pacing because you do have to go from scene to scene to scene to finally get to the end where you get some answers um, and I think that's maybe the best way we could talk about the Shattered Medallion and where it falls and why it falls that way. Although it tries, it just can't match up to the adventure of some other games that we'll look into here in a minute. And so it falls into the low tier. Oh man, another hot take. I don't know why I have so many hot takes right now on this one. But yeah, Treasure in the Royal Tower falling in the low tier of its ending. Here's the deal. I had no intention or idea that some of one of just some of my like you know favorite games the ones that i love i had no idea that they would fall into the low tier of this video especially because there's so many things that this game does right so you may be thinking okay carter what in the world this ending is fine what's going on what are, what are your views here here's the deal i think that lisa's villainous monologue is painstakingly slow it really slows down the adrenaline and the rush that i feel like you're supposed to feel at the end of the game because she really does just sit there and talk for a long time and a lot of it is just like yeah i'm gonna steal the diamond and i'm gonna be rich and i you are smart i did do that and, and it's just like her openly admitting everything and i feel like that's not as fun and so i don't feel feel like they needed to add so much of the monologue yet. Maybe it could have been added later, you know? It would have been, I feel like, even more interesting. Like, what if, you know, we do trap Lisa at the bottom of the pit, and somehow Professor Hotchkiss and uh, Dexter and Jacques, they all show up and they're at, like, the bottom, they're at the, they're at the bottom of the stairs, also, like, going nancy is that are you okay up there and and nancy's all like yeah i found the diamond uh and da, 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 lisa and so lisa basically like you know unfoils a couple of things or something i just feel like that's more interesting than getting it all dumped on us at one time i also don't like that lisa sprays us with this you know pepper spray and the pepper spray lasts just while she talks. So there really was no point in the pepper spray. I feel like it would have been even more interesting if Lisa would have actually ran away and our vision remained blurry and we had to figure out a way to stop her while our vision remained blurry. But having it just blurry while she talked and gave the whole speech about everything she did just didn't really do anything. It wasn't dramatic or, th or threatening. It just like hindered nothing and so I don't feel like it had that element of danger or threat to it as other endings of other games have and then of course 
the challenge or the ending puzzle of this game just was a bit too simple, I feel like. Um, we literally just press a button and we capture Lisa. It's incredibly simple. And I think those games where there is much more anticipation and the music is counting down and you're having to solve a puzzle to quickly catch the culprit or save someone or something is much more thrilling. And this game kind of lacked that. It was a pretty nonchalant, anticlimactic ending for a game that excels in a lot of ways. But yeah, that's my take on why Treasure in the Royal Tower falls in the lower tier. <laughs> Please don't come for me. Ah, uh, Danger by Design. I love this game, and it saddens me to have to put it in the low tier. And to be honest with you, it gets a little extra bonus points for a couple of reasons, and it may teeter between middle tier and low tier, I would say. But let me just go ahead and explain my methods. So first of all, I feel like, and I believe that, there is a level of requirement from the player that you have to kind of believe that Nancy could fight Manette and just not even throw a punch and just exhaust Manette to the point of passing out, which I feel like is a pretty um, wild thing to have your player stretch out and believe. It really does make things a lot more uh, fantasy-like. And I like those real life dangerous situations that Nancy gets in, you know, the kind that she gets in in the books where she gets like, you know, clobbered over the head and thrown into a car or thrown off the side of the road from the car. You know what I mean? Like those are really fun. This though is... Is, 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 is pretty random. And it was so unexpected when I remember playing it and it just coming about, you know, like you emerge from the lower level of the Mulan and and Manette wants to start fighting. It's just so random. Um, I will say too that I, you know, it, ah, you know, having to listen to the henchmen that were blackmailing her per se, but in reality, they had been working with Manette all along. Um, having to hear Manette explain everything, like, I've been putting up with your letters, your flowers, the, you know, um, the bugs. Like, I've been putting up with everything. I don't see why I couldn't get paid right now. And so hearing all of that is like, oh, well, so there's all the things that we couldn't have really figured out without Manette confessing all of those things right now because we eavesdropped. I will give bonus points that at least we eavesdropped and we didn't have to hear some like long dialogue from a um, villain. And so I think that does kind of raise it up for me if I had to say it, it's so close to the middle for me. Um, I also I also think they got more creative with this ending and I would have to also put that into the hat as well, seeing that it's a little bit closer to the middle as well. But, but, it just is slow and, un and it just unfolds so, so unexpectedly, you know, it, it, it's just like, we're going to sit here for 15 minutes and I'm just going to keep blocking all of Manette's moves until then the story, like, that's, that's it. That's the mystery, um, you know, so it just kind of feels like that. <laughs> Uh, in a way, but extra bonus points for the fact that this was the first game where you could actually have two different endings. And I think that's a pretty phenomenal thing. And I actually like it when they implement that in the Nancy Drew games. And I think it can work well. Um, and in this case, it did work well. I loved the two endings that we got and that we received with Danger by Design. I just wish the overall ending was something a little bit, you know, just more more developed and just deeper into that just drama and uh anticipation and threat and danger and there was none of that you know i don't really know what would have been a better alternative um but i would have loved to have been able to have seen manette's henchmen that were you know ordering her around that would have been cool um you know, or, or something. I, I don't know. It, it just, it just lacked a little bit of just, mm, I feel like. Um, but other than that, it's a pretty okay ending. And I would say it's very close on the line and probably a little bit closer to middle tier um, than lower. 
So I'm putting Secrets Can Kill, the original and remastered, in the middle tier. And the reason why I'm doing that is because there was so much more of this danger and threat feeling and vibe once you got towards the end of the game. And I love that. I think it makes for such a more exhilarating ending once getting to that point in the case where you're like, I think this is it. I think I've solved it. I especially love the remastered version. Um, because it's a little bit more intense. Um, both have guns, and I love that. I love that it has that kind of uh, difference in it. Uh, no other game is really that uh, direct. Um, but in the ending, I love that we finally see the video of uh, what is supposed to be uh, an undercover cop, and then we learn that, oh my gosh, this is not who this man says he is, and then he just enters into the room. It is so so good but yeah just a middle tier because i feel like we get a little bit more of a complete story towards the end on everyone it is a bit rushed but it does feel more whole and complete with the danger aspect and then also having a little bit of the challenge as well of figuring out what to do next to get out of a dangerous situation that feels so much better of an ending than having something that is a little bit more um less energy and low low energy vibes so anyways yeah secrets can kill goes in the middle tier next up is waverly academy and another one that i was surprised by because i absolutely love this game and feel like it excels in so many areas and really honestly the ending is not that bad it is actually pretty good. I think why it falls in the middle tier is because it is a more chill, chillaxed kind of ending. It's not something I feel like that is super threatening or terrifying. Actually, Nancy doesn't seem to be that worried in this situation. I think she's pretty confident she's going to get out of it. So it's not a high stake moment. Um, I do enjoy hearing Corrine spill. And it's a little bit different than other villain monologues that we've had. Kareen's monologue is so natural. It does not feel like a cartoon. I don't know why, but like hearing Lisa in Treasure in the Royal Tower, I feel like I'm listening to Dr. Doofenshmirtz from Penis and Burb going on his uh, rampages about his, you know, evil plan, right? But Kareen's just felt so natural. They played her character so well at being this this girl who wants to be wanted and to fit in and kind of has this like very deep obsession about getting things perfect and right and wants it her way and so it just it worked really well to hear her just kind of say well yeah you know I did do this and I think that if you would just I mean like it just her speech was just so natural and so it was much more believable in that sense and although the puzzle wasn't super challenging. It is a step up than something like, say, Treasure in the Royal Tower, than just hitting a button. So there was that. It does feel more complete. And the ending part where you have to go up to Mel's room and they're having an argument is so solid. It is so great to see the two kind of going back and forth. It's so real. Everything in this game to me feels so real. Um, and also they did a really great job of making everything come full circle and making sure that everyone's story had fully been told. I think they did an excellent job with that. I feel like every character's um, story was resolved and I enjoy that. I think the only thing is is that the actual ending part maybe could have been either a little bit more threatening or a little bit more elongated because it was a very quick ending. There wasn't a whole lot to it. Um, that's maybe why I would put it more middle tier instead of it being just this perfectly polished ending, but it's still a really good ending though. Hey, it's Carter. Did you know that 53.1% of people that watch my content aren't subscribed? So hey, if that's you, why don't you go ahead and click that subscribe button down there, or like, or comment, whatever you want to do. It just helps get my content out to people that may have not seen it that may enjoy it. Anyways, I'll let you get back to the video. Thanks for watching. Let's discuss the ending of Shadow at Water's Edge. Okay, so I'm really excited about this one. Uh, this one's a really fun game, and it's a spooky, scary game as well, but I find it really fun too. But uh, yeah, middle tier, so let's talk about it. I think the biggest part 
part that it's missing is the the threat or the danger. Once we find out that the ghost is actually a robot, the death and the threats and the all that all just kind of goes out the window. Rentaro is not the scariest of culprits. Actually, he's not very threatening either. I think he is another one of those culprits that realizes he's done bad and is remorseful about it and he's really not gonna like come at Nancy or try and attack her at any point anymore um so the death and the threats and the that's kind of really it's not there anymore so because that's not there that kind of lowers the expectation of the vibe you're gonna have you're not gonna go in like like heart racing like oh what I gotta do to catch the guy the bad guy that's already happened in the baths with the ghost, right? So I think that does kind of bring it down a notch. Um, other than that, I do think it does a great job of going through all of the characters and kind of rounding out and completing the uh, family stories. I think what it uh, does well and is interesting is that this is another game that has a multiple ending solution, but I actually like this one better than Danger by Design. I think they present it a little bit better. Um, they basically give Nancy the option to either tell on Rentaro or let Rentaro do the telling. And I think that's an interesting take and they do have different options. And then let's also talk about how Nancy catches him. I think it's such a sleuthy move to take the recorder that was Rentaro's that he was using um, and then use it against him. Oh, so classic. Uh, uh, such a good, good way to catch the culprit. And I love that that was incorporated into the ending. Uh, kind of makes you have to think on your toes, uh, think fast, you know, and I, and I like that. I think that that's putting you in the shoes of a detective and that is so enjoyable. So all around, this is a pretty solid ending. I think if it just had that little bit of just stress factor to it, if it had that, I probably would be 100% sold on the ending and would have totally gone for it. Because if it had that, it would have everything. But yeah, that's the Shadow at Water's Edge. Okay, so Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake is another phenomenal game, but I do want to talk about this ending. I just feel like going back and rewatching. That Emily Griffin is, <laughs> she's such an interesting culprit. I love that she's going to just, she's going to do the whole nice shtick the entire time. She's not giving up. She's going to make Nancy feel like she's her best buddy till the very end. Um, I just feel like the encounter that we have with her is so short. This whole entire ending is just too short. It could have been longer. I feel like it would have done the ending um, a lot of justice, just made it better. To pad it out a little bit longer. Um, I do think that the, the challenge of switching greats is incredibly smart and I love that that was a part of the end game solution. I think that's smart. Um, Emily Griffin, it was a little daunting to see her come over the top part of the sewer with a big bone. Um, it was a little, that, that is a little, I guess, terrifying, but for some reason something about her is just not overtly threatening like some other end scenes and other culprits and so um there doesn't feel as so much danger here and nancy again she's not scared she feels pretty confident that she's going to get out of this situation um i think the part where i feel like it must go into middle tier is that although it does go over all the characters it just for whatever reason the ending of this game is so quick it just feels like it was a little rushed and i would have loved something a little bit more um theatrical for a game such as this one that is so 20s roaring 20s and so much has happened in the game i would have loved a little bit more uh something of the ending it could teeter a little bit towards the top tier but it's still in the middle tier for me just as far as how it comes about Oh, I love Alibi and Ashes, and revisiting the ending was super thrilling, and I loved it. I love that there is this buildup to get to the lair that Brenda has, but uncovering all of her obsession over Nancy Drew, how articulate her schedule is so she can be at every place all at once, and even the nice addition of the dartboard with Nancy's logo on it 
is so good. It does make you feel a little on edge that that's who you're in the room with. And I think that's a good feeling to have. That's good. You want to feel that way towards the end. Um, the puzzle is incredibly challenging and it does make you think, I need to get out of here. You really have to uh, use the uh, clues for the puzzle and you really have to, it's almost kind of like a recall to the uh, moving rooms in the Curse of Blackmore Manor. Like you really have to pay attention. And so it is a, it is a challenge to get out of there. Um, and I also really like the ending. I think it's hilarious how uh, she's reporting at the end and she's trying to give her news newscasting a news report and she gets arrested and she's just running back and forth trying not to get caught and she falls down. It's hilarious. So... It's a really good ending. So what makes it middle tier for me? Well, <clears throat> I think that I really wish in some form or way I could have gotten like this just snap from Brenda and we never got that. I think that would have like taken it up a notch with her personality and I would have loved to have seen that. She was pretty like, you know, chill coming in and seeing Nancy and being like, oh, I think you're going to foil my plan. You're not. And then like shuts the door. I want to see her snap. I want to see her obsession get so hardcore she just snaps. <laughs> you know, um, I do wish that maybe we have gone a little, uh, uh, you know, a little, just maybe a little deeper uh, into her obsession with Nancy. But I, I, I will take what we get. That's fine. That's fine. But yeah, middle tier. I, you know, I just, I think for me, uh, it was a little drawn out. It was a little bit more slow pace. And so because of that, it it, it does kind of bring it down a notch. Um, you know, it does kind of have this lag of having to do the puzzle in the van to get the key, to get down there, to open it, then to go through all the tunnels. I mean, there are a lot of instances where you're like just trying to catch Brenda and it feels like it's gonna take forever. And so I think that little bit of lull is the only thing that keeps it from being a top tier ending because it's it's all around pretty phenomenal. Um, I would say it's probably close to the line of top tier, um, but yeah, yeah, just that lull I think is what makes it come down a little bit to middle tier. And that's Alibi and Ashes. My initial reaction to The Ghost of Thornton Hall was I was impressed with how thorough it was. And I always appreciate a good thorough ending because that's going to give you the most resolution. It's going to make you feel the most complete. Um, and I appreciated that about this game, that it did this. Um, I think where it lacked the most was actually in its multiple endings option. And uh, this is the other game in the series that allows you to have more than one ending but the problem is is that two of the endings are wrong like it basically sets you up and tells you that it's wrong <laughs> and when nancy writes her final letter to ned she's like wow i really wish i could go back and do some things oh well i guess i'll come home now and it's like oh so you really are kind of your hands are forced and you kind of have this one route and option the game wants you to go that actually does give you the full story and the full picture and i understand that is what comes about with um multiple endings it's just that the other two multiple endings were very short and cut off and they didn't give you any answers and they were like yeah everyone basically is it going to ignore you and hate you because you picked the wrong thing and so i don't like that it kind of forces your hand to pick the right one then there's really no point in multiple endings you know what i mean but however it is thorough I will say it does lack a sense of threat from the culprit, but there is danger on the scene. And I feel like that's one ending that we haven't gotten yet. So obviously there is this pressure, there is this time frame. We have to get out of this burning building as soon as possible. And who are we bringing and what are we going to do? And there are multiple challenges for having to go back and try and save everyone out of the house. And that is so good as a detective because you have to figure out with what's around you how to escape the environment, how to get out of this high stake situation. And so in those lights, Ghost of Thornton Hall 
nails it, knocks it out of the park. I just wish those two things were, ch were different. I wish there could have been some kind of threat from the culprit or some kind of tension or danger there, but Clara is not that kind of culprit. She is not going to threaten or try and come after Nancy. She actually was just going to just stand there and take it. And then also to just the multiple endings. I feel like that's kind of a little blurb that I feel like could be fixed and make it a little bit better. But um, yeah, I think that's why Ghost of Thornhall falls more in the middle tier to me. Okay, the Icicle Creek Lodge, the White Wolf of the Icicle Creek Lodge. Okay, the ending here, man, it does a really good job of still trying to throw you off Yanni's trail and make it look like it's Lou. They really wanted you to think it was Lou and they're still doing it and you're right here at the end. Um, I will say that Yanni as a culprit, he doesn't give any like threatening vibes like he's gonna, you know, try and attack you, but mostly because he still thinks that he's hiding his identity and that you don't know he's a culprit, so why would he need to, right? Um, so he just kind of plays it off like he's on your side, he's helping you, but I will say the point where Nancy shows um, that Isis recognized his scent on the thing that fell off his arm, and she picks it up and she's like, oh my gosh, he's about to blow the place up. And she runs out. That was perfect. That was so cinematic and so great to have in the ending. I loved that um, for the ending. Yes. And it's so exciting that we actually get to go catch the culprit. We get to get on a snowmobile and be like, I'll explain later. And then we just like hop on and we just gas it and go. That is so fun. That's a good ending. The only thing is, is that I do feel like the ending can be a bit dragged out. And that's just a matter of just time. You know, you're, you're, there's so many different puzzles and you're down in the needle and you know, you're having to catch on. It's just, it, it can be dragged out a little bit. There is a lull in this ending to me, but Overall, I think it's a generally, it's a it's a good one. I think a lot of the middle tiers just have good, they have good solid endings. Um, nothing too confusing. There's a good, there's a pretty good resolution. Most things come full circle. There just may be a little slowness or lull. But other than that, I think we're doing good here. And um, they did a good job with the White Wolf of Icicle Creek. Last train to Blue Moon Canyon. Oh, okay. Overall, I think this game keeps the vibe the same throughout, so it's very consistent. And to me, it lacks a lot of that pressure and danger. This one just has a lot of adventure, which I don't mind. I find it very exciting and thrilling. It is it is fun. I think Lori has a really good culprit personality. I love that she is more diabolical than what she appears to be on the outside. But I do wish that maybe I would feel a bit maybe more threatened by Lori. Um, and, I, and I think there is a little bit of that. You know, you could hear that in Nancy's tone was like, Lori, you can't be serious, right? And then she actually goes through with it. But my thing is, is that she doesn't, she just doesn't have that um, threat about her that I, that I get from the like really, really exciting end scenes that I've had from game sequences. And, um, you know, we have to go through her whole monologue where she's talking out loud to herself and it is a little bit cartoonish, kind of similar to Lisa where she's just kind of talking out loud and saying everything. But this one, I don't mind as much because I think it makes sense with her personality that she's having to think through these things. And she's like, yeah, yeah, that would make sense. And I like that. I like that. Um, I will say where this ending, where the game ending just absolutely shines is the uh, escape in the minecart. They had never done this in a game before. This was completely brand new where Nancy had to escape that situation. That was actual, the, that was the actual uh, threat was escaping the mine in a minecart. And that was really fun. It was fun doing that. It was fun reading and finding the president's note because that was an unexpected find. Um, but I think why it takes the game down to a middle tier is just because it lacks a little bit of that. It's more it's more in the fun category, which is fine if that's the kind of ending that you like. And I do think in that in the sense of this game it works because this game is so adventuresome anyways. Um but to me the biggest weight of why it's in the middle tier is actually in its ending resolution. I don't understand why 
uh, Lori doesn't get charged or anything like that. She basically um, gets her credit cards taken away <laughs> at the end of the game. It's like it's like she didn't do all the things that she did, which were pretty dangerous. Um, and and it just it feels um, it feels like maybe we could have wrapped up you know the stories of everyone a little bit differently. Um, it felt one, once you get out of the minecart and then you do get your resolution, it just felt a little like, hmm, you know, uh, maybe we could have gotten a little bit more on that. So that's my only reason I think Block goes into middle tier. And like I said, with most of the games in middle tier, they have really solid endings. I'm just being a little nitpicky um, on some of them. But um, yeah, yeah, for the most part, they're good. They're good. I would just have those few suggestions maybe to make it even more flawless. The Silent Spy. I, um, ooh, this one. Okay, the ending. The ending is very challenging, I would say, in this one. This challenge that it has is definitely top tier. You have to go through numerous, numerous puzzles to finally reach the end and also catch Ewan, the culprit. And um, I enjoy that. I think that that's so good, and I love that. I also love that the puzzle is timed because it does... Um, you know, give the player a more of a thrill and it creates this tension of I've got to do this now in order to save everyone. I've got to do this. It's a very heroic feeling that you get as a detective. And I enjoy that. Those, all of those things make it top tier. Um, I also love the ending, how it resolves everything. This is the first game I feel like they did an excellent job at creating um, a very strong emotional attachment from player to character, um, like really, really well. And we get that a lot when Nancy's writing her letter and she directs the letter to her mom. And I love that. It really ties everything up nicely. So all of those things make it top tier. Where, where, where is it middle tier for me? Well, what really knocked it down was uh, just the overall culprit in general. Ewan is a pretty, um, Yes, he is an evil. He is an evil culprit. There is no denying that. Um, I think it's just, and maybe we'll get to um, the top tier, and it'll make more sense. But having a culprit that's just so like chill about what they're doing, like they're just so like, yeah, mm, this is what I'm doing. It um, doesn't worry you as much, or it doesn't stress you out as much. There's not as much urgency from your side as a detective to. Um, thwart away from the culprit or to escape a dangerous situation. Instead, Nancy pretty much just captures Ewan in like a in like a little wall prison in the back of his uh his lab, his lair, and that's pretty much it. Like you know, uh, and that that that's really all it is to catching the culprit. And then other than that, she just is in constant communication with her spy glasses on. And she's solving puzzles. But yeah, no, it just I felt like I wish Ewan could have been more dangerous or been more diabolical towards Nancy or something in that sense, but he is very laid back. He's a very laid back culprit. And for me, having a laid back culprit is fine, but I love when we have this unhinged culprit. It makes like for my favorite endings, I feel like in games, it just really, it just goes the whole nine yards to have someone that is truly unhinged and has snapped. So, um, other than that, I think the Silent Spy does, like all the other middle tiers, a really excellent job. Um, just those few things that I wish I could change. Ah, Secret of the Old Clock. I just uh, love, love, love this ending. I It can't make my top tier because, you know, it's more of like a funny, silly kind of, uh, it, you know, adventuresome kind of ending. And that's okay. It can still be a good ending. And, it, and, and these middle tiers, they are. They are still good endings, you know? I, I think what I love, let me just explain the feelings that I feel like the player, the detective feels. When you go to Jim Archer and you let him know that, that Josiah had another key and he's like, Josiah didn't have another key. And like you open up the other safe deposit box and you look at that picture and you both go, that doesn't look like Jane Willoughby. And Nancy goes, no, it sure doesn't. That moment makes your stomach drop because at that point you realize you've been around some rando lady who's been impersonating someone else. It's such a great kind of plot twist at the end of the story. And 
what it does is it sets you up for this urgency, this, oh, I've got to hurry and go catch her before she leaves. And you get a good old fashioned car chase scene where you have to catch the culprit. It is great. I think it is great for what it does. And it, in, in its sense of being a fun ending, it excels. I think there's no real... Um, like danger or threat towards Nancy. It's just a matter of I've got to get the culprit. I do like the the um, the challenge of trying to catch up to Jane. It is a lot more simple. It's not as super challenging. So maybe that's why it makes more of a middle tier. And then everyone does kind of generally get a pretty good resolution. It's 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 a little bit short. It's a little bit short, and it's pretty quick. But um, overall, it's still a really fun ending with um, having to trick her at her old game and cut her off and then she ends up crashing into the pie into all the pies oh man what an ending right um but for those reasons i have to put it back in the middle tier because there are others there are other games that we're about to talk about that are just so good that they cannot be moved from the top tier legend of the crystal skull does a lot of things right with its ending so let's talk about that first of all I don't normally like a long villainous monologue, and we've talked about this, but for Renee, it actually makes sense. Once we actually track her down and she's at the swamp and she just goes on this like rampage of just, it wants to be mine, it's mine. It almost just feels like she has snapped. She has become totally unhinged and obsessed with this crystal skull. And that kind of monologue, we can do that. Like that is, we like that, we love that. And that's fun. I will say that the ending is not as much of a challenge, and that is unfortunate. And there's nothing, it's it's just a simple match game uh, at the very end to escape uh, from the crypt. And I feel like maybe there could have been something more, um, you know, challenging about it, and maybe that's why it's a little bit more middle tier for me. I think that I love that the culprit tricks Nancy with the whole nice shtick, uh, making her think that she can just toss whatever's up in your hand and I'll pull you up. Really smart and clever. I love that. I think they did a great job with that. It really goes well with uh, Renee's character. Um, and I think my favorite part of the entire ending is the fact that we have to go track her down by um, finding her footprints in the garden slash cemetery. I think that's really smart and so fun. And I love that it's storming the entire time. It makes the environment more chaotic and more, um, like there's more pressure to get going and get things done. Um, I think the, the most clever part of the entire ending is actually the idea that we have to bump the log so Bernie will uh, scare Renee. I think that's a really good recall to something that we learned earlier in the game, and that is a clever aspect of the ending. But if they would have maybe just kind of made the challenge of the puzzle a little bit better, I think I maybe would have said that this was a a pretty solid top tier ending. Just for those reasons, I think I ranked it to the middle tier. But yeah, generally, it's still really great. Okay, I left my last middle tier game because I knew it was a hot take, <laughs> but I actually have Ransom of the Seven Ships in a middle tier. And I know that you guys are thinking, oh, uh, what, what? How in the world is this game's ending better than Message in a Haunted Mansion, Treasure in the World, how in the world? Let me explain. I feel like although this game is incredibly problematic and had so many issues in its plot, in its story. I think the ending is probably some of the best of, of the entire game. I think it, uh, it's, it's, the, it's the best work in Ransom of the Seven Ships is its ending. And I think because, you know, a, lot, a, a, a long way throughout the game, there's a lot of just plot holes, things that don't work, we have questions, but at least at the end, we're getting some of the good classic qualities I feel like should happen in a Nancy Drew game. We have an unhinged, dangerous culprit, right? And not only that, but one that returns from a game whose culprit ending was superb. And so I feel like that just overall heightened up the drama and the danger and the threat, and it was great. And I love 
his unhinged monologue. We can deal with that. It's not super silly like Lisa. For, I just, I always go back to Lisa from Treasure of the World Tower because that was my least favorite villainous monologue um, because it just didn't work. It didn't make sense. She sprays us with venom spray, uh, <laughs> evil devil's venom spray, pepper spray, and then we're just blurry while she just explains everything she did. It just doesn't make sense. This one makes more sense. It's him wanting revenge against Nancy. Dwayne Powers doesn't want Nancy to succeed. Um, and that makes more sense to me. I also like how he comes for Nancy and traps her and throws her into this pit. And I think that that's so much more entertaining um, uh, to have in the ending of a game. Uh, other than that, I will say that there is a challenge to try and escape the pit that Dwayne Powers puts you in. Uh, the puzzles are, are, are overall pretty challenging. And the ending resolution, there are still some portions of it I think that aren't full circle or complete because they just don't work with the actual plot and storyline of the game. And so for that reason, I would say it's more middle tier. But um, other than that, I think it uses its elements pretty well and does a pretty good job, I think, of creating that danger, of making you use your detective wits to get out of a situation that the culprit puts you in, and is generally pretty pretty good. Now, I can't say that for the rest of the game, but I will give it to Ransom of Seven Ships. I think it has a pretty um, good ending for a game that needed a lot of more work. We're finally in the top tier, and I'm so excited to talk about these games endings that I love so much. So the first one is Sea of Darkness, and ah, just right off the bat, being in the ice caves is incredibly eerie and daunting, and it just puts this rock like at the bottom of your stomach. You just don't know what's going to happen. I mean, you're exploring with this flashlight, and there's discolored rocks that look like blood, and it just... Oh, it just gives you ooh, creepy vibes, right? But it does make you feel at threat and in danger, especially when you um, all of a sudden come upon Soren, who's holding this enormously large axe. Um, it just really makes you feel like Soren has completely gone unhinged over this treasure. Um, he will do anything for it. You don't want to set him off. You are in a dangerous situation and you've got to use your detective wits to get out. Especially when Soren causes uh, this cave in and the ice caves. You really have to think about, okay, think Nancy. Use your head. Use your detective wits to solve these puzzles and get out of here. And that I enjoy. I enjoy that. That is what makes a good solid ending. And then especially when we get towards the um, resolution of all the characters, we get a very nice, thorough resolution on every single person. And that is the exact feeling you want when you finish the game. You want to know what happened with everyone and where they all end up. So I would say Sea of Darkness has the perfect amount of threat and danger, excitement and thrill, um, it's got a good resolution, and you also have a nice, good challenge to get out of it. I think it is a solid ending, and it really couldn't have been done any better. Ah, oh, The Captive Curse. I love this game's ending. I think it does so many things right. Um, starting with the fact that Nancy is frantically called into Carl's office, and she is instantly instantly put into like sleuth mode gotta go find what out what is going on where did lucas go and so we kind of get thwarted into this you know situation all of a sudden and there's you know this anticipation and then all of a sudden after we find lucas we get knocked out unexpectedly and we have to go through um, a series of puzzles to not only get lucas out but also to get back out of the tunnels, out of the well and everything. And I think that that so far, you've already nailed two portions of what a top tier ending should do. You have already ha added a lot of thrill and excitement and you already have some good challenges ahead of you. So where the um, threat and the danger comes into play is really through Anya's reveal. I think the reveal of Anya was superb and could not have been better. And first of all, let me just point out too, I love that they gave us the option 
to choose who we thought the culprit was before the monster was unmasked. I thought that was actually a nice um, recall to Stay Tuned for Danger, the first game that allowed us to be able to choose a culprit. And I always love when they do that. That works. I love that. And having to do that in The Captive Curse was no different. It was great. Um, once Anya takes her mask off and she's like, I don't think I'll need this anymore. And then she kind of goes on her, her, her own, you know, villainous monologue. And now you guys know, I don't like a villainous monologue. And I will say the same for, um, Anya. Hers was kind of long and I, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish it wasn't as long. Um, you know, that kind of slowed it down just a bit. However, it, let me tell you how it redeems itself. The way it redeems itself is that right at the very end, you have to use your detective wits to catch Anya. And after you do, and you catch Anya, you kind of get this little bit of um, riff between Nancy and Anya, and it's great. And Anya is kind of saying, you know, this isn't the last you're gonna hear of me. You know, you know what, you know what this means, Nancy? Until we meet again. And Nancy just plays it off and she's like, oh, I'm so scared. I'm, you're the monster and I'm the girl in the dress, remember? And so it just, Nancy kind of plays it off and I love that. I think that's a great mixture at the end and it kind of leaves you feeling a little unsettled, like Anya may return back and seek revenge on uh, Nancy. And I've always thought that Anya would be a perfect person to bring back as a culprit, but in general, once you move past all of those things and you get to the end of the game and you get the resolution on everyone, it does a really good job of tying everyone's stories up, telling you everything that happened, where everyone's going off into their paths and what's going on. It just, it's a good ending. It nails everything in my opinion. And it's, it, it's got that going for it. You know, uh, it, it's a good ending. It makes it into the top tier for those reasons. That's the captive curse. I could talk about the Phantom of Venice's ending all day. <laughs> I just really think it's so good. So um, let's just kind of go over the criteria and the things that I just love about the ending of Phantom of Venice. So first of all, I love that Nancy has had to trek through all of these tunnels and solve a very challenging puzzle. And once you get to this door, you finally realize, oh my gosh, this is that cutscene from the very, very beginning of the game. It's such a nice recall to like Nancy's dream-esque of her being trapped inside this boiler room earlier at the very, very beginning of the game. And that is so fun. I love that they added that uh, detail that they don't um, normally have in their endings. And so then we get trapped and we have to escape. And we go on this long stretch of having to actually hunt down the culprit, Elena. And I think that is so challenging and so fun as the detective. I mean, how fun is that to go track down your culprit and beat them at their own game, catch them at what they're doing, and then you get to interrogate them face to face. Oh, that is so good. And especially too, because you know that Elena is the whole entire crime ring like she's the ringleader here and so it does feel like nancy is entering into a, a pretty dangerous situation she had to escape a dangerous situation and now she's putting herself in even more danger having to track down elena and catch her so i think all of those elements are superb they did a great job at the ending of phantom of venice and then we get a beautiful resolution that goes down each individual uh uh, person and even the even the even the criminals like we get to we need to, we get to know all about Antonio Fango we get to know about Brigella we get to know about um uh every single one that played a part in the in the crime ring and I think that is such a nice way to just go ahead and just put a bow on everything but then out of everything I love that we get that little bit of um un 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 uneasiness feeling that we get at the very end when Elena goes, it isn't over between us. And I think that is gold. That's a gold ending because it sets it up for the possible return of Elena Berg. She could totally come back and be a, another Dwayne Powers, but I think it would have been even more successful if it was someone like Elena because Elena and Anya, they're giving Nancy a reason um, 
to uh, to come back. And so uh, I just I really think that this ending does a great job at all of the elements and deserves a place in the top tier. Okay. I forgot how good this ending was until I, again, watched all of the endings for this video and was reminded that this one is so good. You're all around the monolith. You have the whole entire game been trying to find all of these pieces of jade. You finally are able to open the thing up and lo and behold, who shows up behind you? It is none other than Taylor Sinclair. And he's just so unnerving because he just, he's going to do whatever it takes to get what he is after. And that makes me feel a little nervous. Um, I think that the overall challenge is actually great because it is timed. So as the detective, you, you feel that pressure of, oh, I've got to hurry and get myself out of this situation. I'm in danger. And also I love that they added even more to it and made it in the dark. Like, you only have a little spectacle of light to look around and it's so creepy being shoved into this monolith with a dead mummified face that's like all like writhed and looked like it's in like agony oh that just gives me the chills right now talking about it it is so good though having to try and escape that and taylor sinclair he gives a slight little monologue but it's not too long um and it's just so, ooh, it's just so good. It's so evilish. Um, I will say, after you submerge from the monolith, it is a little cheesy to have all three characters there and they're standing there like it, they're in the Avengers. They're just like, our heroine emerges. And they all each have like a couple of lines. It sounds like poetry, like they're all quoting some poem. So I will say that one's a little, it does stiffen it a little bit. You're like, what? <laughs> we What? You know, it was very cartoonish, but, 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 but. I think it has a lot of charm and a lot of character. I love how it fades over to Taylor Sinclair in his office going, What in the world? Confound you, Nancy Drew! I mean, it is, it's such a funny, like, just nice ending to Taylor Sinclair's story. Um... And, and I think they do a good job of giving a nice resolution. So we've had challenge, we've had thrill, we've had danger and threat, and we have a nice resolution. So it it's all there for me, and I think it makes it for a really great ending. It's a top tier ending in my opinion. And um, yeah, I think that the secret of the Scarlet Hand does an excellent job at ticking off all of the boxes for a top tier ending. Oh my gosh, this one just, oh, it just thrills me. It thrills me. Oh my gosh, the deadly device, the ending, you guys. Oh man, Victor is terrifying. I mean, when those lab doors open and he's just there and he just runs after you, oh my gosh, chills down my spine. This guy is ruthless. He is, re he is relentless in doing what needs to be done for what he wants. And um, yeah, this one just has a very just general overall stressed out vibe because you know as the player that the moment that Victor shows up at the um, lab you get this uneasy feeling in your stomach and that stays with you the rest of the time that he's there but to see him come after you and then you wake up in the the cage oh my gosh like the excitement and the thrill of this ending is just uh and it just puts you on edge now i will also say there is definitely some challenge here to be able to escape the cage you have to solve this pretty intense puzzle and all while you're doing it there's this intense music playing uh there's like these bolts of static and electricity just you know zapping and you feel this threat of danger you feel like you need to hurry and get out of this situation to save yourself and i feel like that's that's nancy that is nancy and um so yeah now of course victor does this whole monologue thing where he talks and everything and it's a bit long but i think it works for his character because he's so unhinged that his monologue almost is just it just makes sense I, and it's not some silly like 
yeah, I did this because blah, 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 blah. No, it's just him just being like, I've had enough. I will get what I want. You know, I mean, like, it is the perfect villainous monologue, I feel like. And yeah, I think it just, it, it, it's a really good ending. And then, of course, once you do reach the end and Victor uh, uh, is zapped by the electricity, you get a beautiful, wonderful resolution to everything every single character very thorough very very good and um they also add a lot of humor element in the ending which is good because i think this is a generally serious game and the ending is pretty serious as well it doesn't have like a like a maybe more of like a heroic fun ending this one had just more of a serious ending so it was fun to see like mason and gray arguing at the expo center and people posting about them online like arguing and putting it on like you like you know youtube the equivalent of youtube and stuff and all these people are commenting i love that they added that at the end it was like it was a nice like hurrah to the characters to kind of just give you a nice good smile at the end you do feel an extra good bit of reward for getting through um, everything you did with this game. There were very challenging puzzles to get through and you were trying to help someone else out while also solving a murder and clearing someone else's name. I mean, there was just a lot of reward here for getting to the end. So I think this ending does what needs to be done. It excels, it's great, it's wonderful. And um, yeah, the Delhi device is just up there in the top tier. I was pretty certain what games endings would make my top tier and this one surprised me. I was not expecting to put the Haunted Carousel's ending up at the top, but let me explain. There is so much anticipation in the ending of the Haunted Carousel. More than in any part of the game, you feel so on edge for what you're about to discover. And I think it's nice because it gives you a little bit of time before the culprit pops up. You know, whereas maybe we saw the secret in the Scarlet Hand, Taylor instantly is there the moment that the monolith opens, right? Whereas this one, you get to actually explore the layer of the culprit. And you're kind of getting to go through things a little bit first to find out who it is. And I love that because you just, you don't know when it's coming. And so... As you're exploring, you're not thinking about it, you open this door and boom, Elliot is just standing there, arms, hands on his hips, like, oh, it's so scary. Like, I'm scared right now, <laughs> what's gonna happen? And he's just so evil. Um, what is so great is that you definitely have to use your detective wits in order to escape this threatening, dangerous situation. Um, you use what you have on you, and I like that because that's what a detective does. Nancy takes the jewels, throws them at Elliot, and runs out the door. Um, but you're not done yet. You haven't escaped the culprit yet. And I love that. I'm glad it's not just a one-time deal that that's it. No, you still have to use your detective wits. And it's so on edge because here comes Elliot. You see his just his legs. You see creeping over behind the sign and you have to think what can I do to get rid of this what what, what, I, what I gotta do to get rid of this guy I mean what do I gotta do you take off the ring and Elliot is thwarted into this uh trap because the sign kicks him back and he falls backward into the pit and it is such a rewarding feeling to get to this point in the end of the game you feel like a true detective, like you have solved something and you have taken down the bad guy. It is so, so good. There's thrill, there's danger and threat. There's a good resolution for every character at the end. And it's an exciting, fun, um, having to use your detective's uh, wits about you. So I think the haunted, the haunted Carousel, it makes it into the top tier. Oh, does this one even need explanation? Do we even have to go into a deep dive of this? I don't even think we have to, but we will. The Secret of Shadow Ranch. Oh my gosh, the ending. Of course, it's already so exhilarating because you've had to work really hard throughout this game to finally get to the treasure, right? But this moment where all of a sudden you see Shorty 
and Shorty gives you, you know, this whole, oh, I'm coming after you. I'm going to get that treasure. If that does not put a pit into your stomach, oh my gosh, it is so exhilarating. And then, of course, you have this intense feeling of, I have got to hurry. He's on his way. And so you've got to figure out, first of all, it took already a lot of work to get through all of those pathways to get to the treasure in the first place. But now you have to figure out, how can I use that to confuse or get out of this situation? How do I how do I escape? And so you really have to use your detective thinking here. You gotta put your detective thinking hat on. And I love that. I love that it makes you think it's challenging. It's using again what you have. Um, the threat and the danger of Shorty get, getting the treasure and coming after you is there because you have him in the background and he's like, I'm almost there, Nancy. I've just got one door left. I mean, it. It, it's so intense. It's so intense. You know, the stress is there. You feel like you have got to hurry and it's all there. So I think the secret of shadow ranch nails that aspect of the ending. Um, he doesn't give too long of a monologue. It's pretty concise. And I enjoy that. I am appreciative of that. Um, because that is better, I think, than having this long few minutes of, well, I did this and this, and I hired these people to do this for me. It's like way too long, right? We just want to hurry up and get out of here. <laughs> but the ending is also, I think it has a nice humorous way that we catch the culprit. I think that that's fun, especially for something that was incredibly exhilarating. And it's nice to take off a little bit of the edge with some humor. And they give a nice pretty uh, good resolution to all the characters. Uh, Mary Yazi and Tex blushing around her all the time. George and Bess finally making it and showing their picture. That was so great that they tied up that loose end. It's just they did a really good job of doing all that in the ending of The Secret of Shadow Ranch. So as far as I'm concerned, it makes it in the top tier and it checks all the boxes off. Oh my gosh, my favorite ending of any Nancy Drew game. I'm a little partial, of course, because it was my first, but still, Danger on Deception Ireland, the ending is just phenomenal. Oh my goodness. Okay. Number one, is there danger and threat at every corner? Uh, yes, there is literally danger at every corner at the ending of this game. I love how it totally threw us off and we think that it's Katie all along. We even have Andy Jason bringing us to the ship. We kayak in the eeriest, just creepiest, thick fog and we're climbing up this ship. I mean, it is the most just movie-esque adventurous just Nancy Drew moment and you're creeping aboard the very uh, top portion of the ship you hear the smugglers just talking and you have to hide from them behind the ship's cargo oh I can just see it now I can I can read this in a Nancy Drew book it's so exhilarating and you walk down and finally get to the level of the ship where you feel like you're gonna come upon and see and find Katie and you see her sitting in the chair you roll the chair around and she's gagged and tied up. Oh my gosh, what a phenomenal ending. Oh, it's so good. It's so, so, so good. And of course you're like, Katie? And you take off the gag and Katie's like, hide, hide, you've got to hide, someone's coming. You hide behind the ship's cargo and lo and behold, who is it? It's Andy Jason, the guy that brought you up to the ship. And now you're like, Oh my gosh, you get this incredible pit in your stomach. You're like, now what am I going to do? The person that brought me to the ship was the actual bad guy. And who's? no one knows that I'm here. So it's just, oh man, that feeling that of getting to the end of the game is incredible. Incredible danger and threat that you feel. And you feel very rewarded at the end because once Andy Jason does approach you and it's so creepy, he's like, say goodnight, Nancy. And he looks like he's going to come for you. Oh, and like choke you or something. Oh, it just, it's so scary. You have to think in that moment, okay, detective work, detective work. What do I do to get out of the situation? How do I get out of the clutch of this culprit of Andy Jason? And you have to recall and remember that anything that you toss to the orca, she will toss back to you. And so you quickly throw something out in the water. She throws it back and it hits Andy Jason in the head and he goes, oh, nuts, which is also a nice little fun way to kind of end the game after something that was so serious and very, very intense for a Nancy Drew game. I mean, someone was 
gagged. They were tied up. Um, Andy Jason looked like he was coming to basically, uh, you know, choke you. I mean, like strangle you. I mean, oh my gosh, the exhilaration of this still lives just talking about it. It is a phenomenal ending and hits all of the checkpoints. Danger on Deception Island, top tier. Second game in the series, stay tuned for danger, has to go in the top tier, has to. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it is so, so, so good. You know, it does so many things right, it just does, it just does. I love that you're having this whole conversation with Lillian about all these things, and basically, you know, I love that they give you the option to choose the culprit, right? And the moment that you say out loud who it is, all of a sudden, this pitch black comes on, the lights turn off, and it's this creepy, like, ticking sound, like, dun, 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 almost kind of like Jeopardy. And you hear over the intercom Dwayne Powers going, that's right, you know, like, it's me. And, like, he reveals that it's actually him. And you and, and Nancy looks up at the top level where the producers would sit, and you can see the outline of his shadow. Oh, my gosh, it's so creepy. And he's just saying, like, all these creepy things like, oh, your time's up. You know, you guys are not going to be escaping this. I'm coming after you. And it is so exhilarating because you've got to move fast. This is timed if... Um, you don't hurry and, you know, get through this, you're going to get caught. And of course, you already have all of the things that have happened in the game thus far. So of course, you feel very, you know, scared for what may happen. I mean, this guy has put a whole bomb in someone's dressing room. I mean, he's sent some pretty um, intense death threats. So I mean, I'm scared. Their death and the, 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 the danger and the peril that I feel right now being in this man's presence, I am scared. And so as a detective, I have got to get through and hurry and there's this puzzle and the puzzle is by total random chance you have to put the but you have to click the buttons in the right order and you're just trying to hurry but you can't think because this music and, and you know that he's coming and it's just so intense but that's how the ending should play out you should feel that way as the player as the detective you're trying to escape the clutch of the culprit and watching him come at you is so scary oh my god it's so scary but it has a nice ending where uh, the security guard he tackles him down and so that's really nice now I will say that the ending is a bit rushed and it doesn't give a super thorough uh, conclusion on everyone but it, it gives enough and I think that I can tolerate that just because the ending is so good um, and this is an earlier game and in the earlier games they hadn't quite mastered um, the thoroughness that they could have in character development yet. So I give it that. That's okay, but only because, only because this ending is thrilling, it's exciting, it's dangerous. You have to use your detective wits and you, it, it's just good. It is a good, solid ending that deserves to be in the top tier. And that is stay tuned for danger. Last, but certainly not least, Oh my gosh, probably one of the best endings in all of the Nancy Drew game series. The final scene. Oh man. I mean, oh, what does the ending do wrong? I don't even think it does anything wrong. It's perfect. It's beautiful. It's flawless. There is so much challenge right here towards the end to get to the culprit to Maya, you know, you have a lot of situations where you're having to solve these puzzles and think, um, but what is, what, what is the best thing they do so well in the final scenes ending? And I would say it's the unnerving, just, you have a clock that's ticking down. You can hear the, 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 the police officers roaming around looking for people. You can hear the demolition people outside. Oh my gosh, it's so good, but even better is that you know, you know that Joseph is just lingering around and he's just saying things like, oh, we're going up in a blaze of glory. And it's like, oh my gosh, this guy has become fully unhinged and I have got to get out of here, but I got to save my friend and the building's going to come down in seconds. It is so exhilarating. Oh my gosh, the stress level's through the roof. So I think they absolutely nail this. Um, and of course, at the very end, Joseph appears. He's not going to let you get by. You have to use something that you 
one way earlier in the game and that is so clever. That makes you feel like a true, true detective. You're having to think about what do I have in my inventory, in my bag, that I can use against him. And you flash this bright light and you're able to get over and turn the um, sign on outside to alert everyone that you are still inside and it is phenomenal. What a phenomenal ending. And of course, this is probably the most rewarding ending out of all the Nancy Drew games because you had only three days to solve this. No one believed you, but it feels so good to finally be heard, to be um, uh, trusted again, to be understood that this is why you've been on edge so much, you know? So everyone kind of thought you were making it up. So it, 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 it it's so good. It's so good. And then of course, you know, it does a great job of resolving all of the characters' uh, uh, endings, you know, with uh, Armstrong and Simone and Had It organization. It just, it's perfect. I mean, there's nothing that can be said about this ending to make it better. It is a phenomenal top tier ending and it just, it's so memorable no matter when you played it. It's fun. It's exhilarating. It's so good. That is the final scene's ending. And that about wraps up my thoughts on the endings of the Nancy Drew game series. So what do you think, Detective? What do you think is the best ending in the Nancy Drew games? What's the worst? I would love to know below. If you don't mind, go ahead and hit that like or subscribe button or give me a comment below. It always helps people find my channel and hopefully will get my content more out to people that may enjoy it. Thank you guys for watching another Nancy Drew deep dive video on Carter Plays. I'll see you again for another video sometime soon.